Welcome to another tutorial part of the Django channel series. In the last one, we added our React application and brought the WebSocket and the chat into React. And in this one, we're going to continue with that and just touch on a few things that we said we could have improved on from the last video. One of the things being authentication. Now, to get started, all you need to do is just go to our GitHub page and to the Just Chat repository. And if you go to the commits, then you can see all of the latest additions to the repository. This one, the fixed authentication is the latest one. And this is the commit that you'll want to get the hash of so that when you pull this repository, you can convert back to the code at this point. That is if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial. So when you clone the repository, then you can just say git reset dash dash hard and then this commit hash and that will take you back to the code at this point. Now, when you get to this point, you're going to see that there are a couple things that were added in between the last video and now, and that is all about authentication, which I've covered in a separate video showing you how to add authentication between Django and React. To see exactly how that's done, just click the card in the top right hand corner now. And in that video, you'll get a really in-depth explanation of what is happening to authenticate the user. I'm not going to go through all of that in this video and rather just highlight a couple of things that are important to understand. So once you've cloned the repository, you've got it open in VS Code and you're ready to go, then let's get started. So I've got the application running. I've got the back end here and the front end. And if we take a look at this, then this is what it looks like. You'll see that there are a couple changes that have been made, especially here in the front end for authentication. So what I did was I just removed all the social links there and just added this little form for the username and password. And if you want to switch to creating an account, then you can just click the switch button to create an account and then just click authenticate. But because we already have super users, I'm just going to go with the logging in method. So for example, if I log in with my username, admin, and I click authenticate, then you'll see that little spinner there for a second. And then my profile here shows at the top with the correct username. So if we jump into the code, we go to source and then the store. Now the store is where the React Redux is. So you've got the actions and reducers. And in here, we're just controlling all the states. So the username and the token of the user and when those certain actions take place, such as logging out when the authentication fails, when it succeeds, and when it starts. So that all defines when the loading takes place. And then we have the actions, which basically define what to actually do. So like, for example, signing up or logging in. And these methods post to the backend server, which is using the Django REST auth as a means of authenticating. Again, you can watch that video to understand all of this. But essentially, we're just storing the variables in our local storage. And then every time we reload the component, so let's show the app.js, every time we reload, so the component did mount, it's going to evaluate the authentication of the user. So this.props.onTryOrder sign up, which is this here. And we check the state of the auth, which basically checks if we have a token and a username in our local storage. And if we do, then we're logged in. So that just ensures that we're logged in and we only see this top part here if we are logged in. Otherwise, we don't see it. And so that really just sums up the authentication. So this little profile here is its own container and that will be displayed when we have logged in. So if I click log out, then you can see it's disappeared. So I'm just going to log back in now. And what I'm going to start off with is the navigation of these chats over here. And so let's just take a look at the components that we're using. So if we go to the containers, we've got the chat, which is the actual display of messages here in the center. We've got the profile, which is the top bit over here with the admin username. And then you've got the side panel, which is all of this over here. So what I want to do is configure the contacts in the side panel here. So these contacts to be links two channels. Now, I'm just going to handle what this looks like in this video, not the actual 
connecting two different channels. We'll handle that in a different one. But so what we want to do is convert these list items into components and then render out the components once we've got the information from the user and what chats they're part of or what contacts they have. So let's go and create a components folder inside source. And inside here, I will just create contact.js. And as always, we start with importing React from React. And we'll just create a constant contact without any state, which takes in props. And we don't even need to use curly braces. We can just use braces like that. And we'll just say export default contact. And in here is where we're going to paste this whole list item here. So we can cut that out and let's just paste it right there. So the information that we want to output dynamically is going to be, let's do the status here. So like online or busy, we can output that dynamically. We can output the source of the user's profile image and their name and the preview I'm going to comment out for now. So let's go and put here props.name and we'll come in here. And if we go to the top, we can import our contact. So we'll say import contact from, then we go back to the components folder contact. And if we come back down, then here we just open up our component and we'll specify the name as, let's get that name there. So put the name there and we can just do it like this as well. Then we'll have the status, which we'll say is online. And we'll have, let's do a pick URL, which can be this image right there. And we paste that in there. And I'm also going to put a chat URL. So the chat URL is going to be kind of like the URL of the actual chat that we have to navigate to in order to connect to that specific chat. So this doesn't exist yet, but let's just say, for example, Lewis, and we can copy that, paste it there, and grab the names from the second one. Again, you would want to output this dynamically by grabbing the information from the user and not just by doing it like this, by typing them out over and over. And we'll put Harvey as the name there. So we can remove that list item there. And we come back in here and this will be props.name and the source is going to be props.pickurl. And I'm also going to import another thing here, which is from the React router DOM package, which is a nav link. And that allows you to navigate without reloading the page. So I'm just going to wrap everything inside the nav link like this. We have to specify the to property, which in this case is going to be outputted from the props. So we're going to output it dynamically and then we'll put in strings and pass in this to output props dot and then the chat URL. So we just put it like that. And if we save this now, let's check if that's still working. And so we get this in blue now. So let's just come here and we will add some style where we'll specify the color as hashtag FFF so that it is white. Now we come back and there we go. Cool, so now the contacts work and if I click on one of them, then you can see that it navigated to slash Lewis or if I click on Harvey, then it goes to slash Harvey. And it's loading the messages and that's because if I go to the roots.js, then here you can see I've got a base router which has one root and that looks for when we navigate to slash, well, anything. And in this case, it's the chat ID. So the chat ID of this chat would be Harvey. And that's when it renders the chat component. Now the chat component is still the same as what it was previously. And it's still connecting to the same port and the same chat. So it's getting the same messages. So again, nothing is configured yet to have unique chats. And so with this working, what I also want to look into is a higher order component. And this here is exactly that, this HOC, 
And this is a special component that's used a lot in React because it has a very useful purpose. And basically what this is doing is it's taking in the props and it's rendering out the children of those props. And to actually see how this works, basically what we do is we wrap this higher order component around other components. And instead of using like a div, for example, here in our roots, instead of wrapping them in a div, this can actually mess with the structure of your HTML and cause your styling to be a bit out. So instead of using a normal div, you use what's called this high order component to wrap around other components and only render what is being wrapped inside the, the high order component. So basically we could come in here into our roots and say import high order component. And if we go to HOC, HOC, then we can replace the div with this high order component. And then what's happening is only these roots are being rendered, but not the actual high order component itself. It's only rendering what's inside here, but it's a good way to wrap other components because sometimes you have to return one component. Like for example, here in app.js, you can see we're returning the router. We have to only return one component. So the high order component helps a lot with that. And so what I'm going to do is wrap most of the things inside here with the high order component instead of using a div, but we're not going to work specifically through that. It's just to introduce you to that concept. What I want to do now is handle the timestamp of the messages. I think we could create a nice timestamp here. And so we're going to go to the chat. So let's close everything here and go to chat.js. So on, on this component, we have the render messages method, which is actually displaying the messages. And we have the timestamp here. I'm actually gonna remove this class. So we have the timestamp rendered inside the small tag, and I'm going to just basically cut this out and create a new method right here above render messages, which I'm going to call render timestamp. And it's going to take in a timestamp and it's going to return basically the text that we must display as the timestamp of the message. So we can start off by saying let, we'll call it the prefix, just equal to an empty string. And over here in the small, we're going to cut out everything inside here that's being outputted dynamically. And we can remove the minutes ago. And all I'm going to do in here is I'm going to say this dot render timestamp of the message dot timestamp. And then in here, we're going to say the constant time difference equals to math dot round, the new date of time minus the timestamp divided by 60,000, which will get it into minutes. So again, we're getting it in minutes, but now we want to just add some conditions to say if the difference was less than one minute, then we would want to add a specific timestamp for that. But because we are rounding this, it's just going to be a bit simpler if what we do is we say, if the time difference is smaller than 60 and the time difference is greater than one, so meaning it's greater than one minute, but it's less than 60 minutes, then we're just going to set the prefix equal to, and we'll output this dynamically as well, then we'll take the time difference. So that's going to be, let's say it was 40 minutes, then it's going to be between those two. So we're going to say 40 and then minutes ago, but let's just put this inside the string. So minutes ago like that. And then we do the same thing for other conditions. So like, so we have the first condition and then we have, if it is smaller than 24 times 60 minutes, so meaning smaller than one day or 24 hours, but it's greater than one hour, then display it as so many hours ago. And then the same thing for days. If it's smaller than 31 days, but greater than one day, then display it as so many days ago and etc. So you can keep on going and going, but I just add this else statement here to say, otherwise, if it's greater than 31 days, then just display it as the actual timestamp of the message, which would be like sent on the 21st of November, whatever, whatever, whatever. And that'll just be handled according to your time zone. You'll see what I mean. And so we just needed to remove messages from the timestamp here so that it's just grabbing the timestamp that's being inputted. And so now if we check what this looks like, let's refresh the page. Now we can see the messages have, so four days ago, four days ago, eight, eight, etc. So if we were to just come here and 
let's just get rid of everything from there. And if we just comment some of these things out and just leave that out as well, then this is what, what I meant. So Wednesday, November 7th, and it's sending with the timestamp South African time. So this is gonna be for your time zone instead of mine. So that's what would display if the message was older than 31 days, but we can just go and uncomment that. And so that's the rendering timestamp method handled. So now at least we get a better timestamp that's being displayed. And the last thing that I want to handle is automatic scrolling. So for example, if I load the page and we have however many messages, we want it to automatically scroll to the bottom of the chat so that we can see the bottom messages, right? Because those are the most recent messages. So we want it to automatically scroll there. And so to handle this, I'm just going to paste this link in here. And this is a Stack Overflow question on how to scroll to the bottom in React. And this person has a really good answer for that. So you just place this div at the end of your messages and you use a reference. So here they add the reference as this.messages end. And then you have a method called scroll to bottom on your component, which uses the reference messages end that you created here and scrolls into the view of that component or of that reference. And then you just pass in behavior as smooth. So what I'm going to do is grab those three methods here and we're going to just add them right here below render messages. And then I'm going to add this div here, which is going to be inside the chat as well. And this is going to come right here at the bottom of the unordered list and actually inside the unordered list because otherwise it's not actually going to work 100%. So I'm just going to paste it right there. So now if we test this out and just refresh this and inspect, then I'm just going to add a couple of messages here and you can see that it is scrolling. We do get this little bit of an error here with the message input that's just hovering mid screen. And so we will want to take care of that, but this is just a styling issue. So I'll fix this and update it in the style.css, which you'll see in the repository. That pretty much covers everything that we wanted to handle in this video. Even though it doesn't seem like a lot, it's nice to just get small touch-ups added so that things are looking a little bit better. So when you pull the repository, you should see a couple fixes to the styling. Again, I don't want you to have to sit and watch me on how to style the application. And so that pretty much covers everything that we wanted to do in this video. We ran through the small updates, such as the authentication, and the rendering of components only when you're logged in and when you're not logged in. And then the timestamp also is uh, being changed to represent something a little bit nice as well. And then the automatic scrolling. So besides those changes, I'm just going to fix small styling errors around and update that in the repository. And then in the next video, we're going to tackle a few more advanced things such as loading the actual chats that belong to the user and connecting to that chat when you navigate to it as well. That's something quite important. And hopefully we'll also be able to tackle permissions and those sort of things in the upcoming videos as well. So if you're enjoying this series, leave a comment down below, let us know what you thought. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.